Hello and welcome again to War Jeepney. This is John and this time we will be looking at Tanks, the World War II tank skirmish game by Gale Force 9. Let's go ahead and unbox this starter set. The starter set comes with all that you need to get a game going. This is a two-player starter allowing you to pit a German Panther tank against a pair of US Sherman tanks. Let's open this box and here we have first are some small cards and these are obviously the upgrade cards and damage deck. A similar feature to another space fighter based game. These starter cards are the tank stat cards and I was surprised to see that they included more than just the cards of the tanks included in the starter. This is good as it will allow us to browse the other tank choices and will help you in making your next purchases. This also allows us to get a glimpse of the other factions not included in the starter box, namely the Russians and the British. Here we have the tanks themselves in spruce. Of course, uh, you have to assemble them. The first is the German Panther tank and there are enough parts here for one to swap between the Panther and the Jag Panther tank. It looks like it has a lot of parts to build but a number of these are optional parts so one should not get too overwhelmed by looking at it. Now the Sherman tanks and as you can see there are two turrets allowing you to swap out the 75mm gun for the 76mm version. This allows you to tweak your lists as you play. Of course the game comes with dice and you get a set for each side. Uh, each having a different color, uh, green for the US side and gray for the German side. I would say this is very generous of this company to provide us with this. Now we take a look at the rule book. It has nice cover art with satin finish and inside we see lots of illustrations. Rules look organized and well labeled and even a bit of World War II fluff based on tanks that we use in the game. The last part uh, gives us a scenario with some fluff and if we turn over to the back cover it is a quick reference guide that is easy to the eyes due to the color filled text boxes. The game also comes with extra stuff such as tokens and terrain templates. Here we see a forest template which you could use in the game and these here are the only movement templates that you will be using so not too much clutter on the table then. These are more tokens and terrain tokens and we even have a larger forest. The stat cards are made with thick cardboard and they have a nice uh, glossy finish. Very good quality. The rulebook also comes with instructions and here we can see the instructions for building both the 75mm and 76mm versions of the Sherman tank. This is for the German Panther tank. The Jag Panther instructions and well all the other instructions are free to be viewed at the Gale Force 9 tanks website. The stat cards are quite easy to understand. We can clearly see the stats of initiative, attack, defense and hull points. Looking at the German faction we see that its faction ability seems to be Blitzkrieg which is uh, something that gives the tank an extra movement out of the movement phase, kind of like boosting. The Russians on the other hand have coordinated fire as its faction ability, which increases your attack if you gang up on the same enemy tank. It is also noteworthy with these cards that the hull stat has damage circles beside it, allowing you to use a whiteboard marker to track damage. The British have semi-indirect fire as their faction ability which allows you when firing from stationary to keep one dice and re-roll the rest which is very good for people like me who often have bad rolls. It is also interesting to see that their heavier tank has the fast trait on it. The American tanks have gung-ho which sort of mitigates the penalty for shooting after you move. So you can move twice, but still shoot as if the tank has only moved once. The starter provides us with different upgrades. A tank can be enhanced by special crew, 
and each type of crew can give various bonuses like increasing initiative or give you more effective shooting. Each tank can also have one special upgrade so you can upgrade either the armor, ammo, the equipment or its engine. Here are my assembled tanks, not really that hard to build. I rarely had to use my Sato knife as there were rarely any mold lines. So here let me show you what I explained earlier about swapping the parts so you can use a different tank. I was really happy to see that the model has provisions to allow turret pivot. I also used some extra parts to add detail to my tank but as I explained to you, you don't have to use them all. Here you see that I still have uh, some extra bits left. Another thing making this easy to build is that uh, they have somewhat provided different notches for each track side. So there is no way you can interchange the left and the right tracks. And here we have the final built up starter models. The assembly of all three should take just about an hour or so. And the details I'm telling you are very good. Of course, uh, for me, I had to paint mine because I want them to look pretty on the table. Uh, they're still a work in progress, but good enough for tabletop game. This game allows you to expand your starter and customize your force by getting additional expansions. I added a Pershing heavy tank to lead my Shermans, and a Stug G and a Panzer IV to reinforce the Panther. I am very impressed with the quality and details of this model so far. Hopefully I can get these guys on the table soon. So there you have it. Now I haven't played a game yet so I wasn't really able to see how gameplay goes but just based on the starter and what you get for the starter I say that uh, this is very good bang for buck.